Hello, Joe from Montmartre here again. Thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to show you some really cool techniques as we create this giant white rose in acrylics. Yes, acrylics. So let's get into it. And the first step is to prepare my 75 by 75 double thick canvas. Now I know it's already beautifully primed, but I want the surface to be really, really slippery so the paint flows nicely. So I'm going to give it another coat of gesso and I'm going to apply it with my long handled gesso brush. I'm using Montmartre gesso here and it's lovely and thick and not too chalky. Slap it on and try and get it as even as you can. Once it's applied, lightly drag your brush over the coat so there are no brush strokes. And let that dry. Once that is done, I can tint the canvas. And I'm going to do that with a mixture of lemon yellow and Naples yellow. This will give the flower real warmth from within and it will create a subtle complexity to the whites when I add them. I'm using Dimension Acrylic as it contains very strong, intense pigments. And I'm applying it with my 75mm wide Taclon Artist brush. I've thinned it with water and I'm applying it haphazardly. Subtle colour changes add interest, I think. I'm going to draw the rose now. And you can find reference images of this on our webpage at montmart.net. Of course a ruler could be used for this job, but it wouldn't look nearly as cool as my granddad's ancient calipers. So the basic rules when you draw a rose are to start from the inside and work your, your way out. And remember too that petals are basically a triangular shape and you're actually building as you draw. You can't really go wrong regarding size, just try and get the petals to sit believably. Now, painting a subject like this in acrylics can be problematic due to acrylics fast drying time. Now don't get me wrong, fast drying paint is great, but it makes colour blending difficult and smooth transitional colour blending is very important when we're painting a limited coloured subject like this. And this is after all just white, isn't it? No, it's not. In actual fact, we're painting a series of greys and some white. And because we can't blend it like we can with oils, we need to pre-mix all of our colours. A different horse for a different course. So let's do that. Onto my Easy Clean palette, I draw a right angle. I then mark five points along the vertical part of my angle. And from these points, I draw five horizontal lines. Geez, what is this, an algebra lesson? Hey, calm down, just bear with me. This is the easiest way to describe tonal colour mixing. I then draw an angled line down our guide, then cover each line with paint. I use titanium white dimension acrylic and try to make each line the same thickness. Now I add two spots of lamp black to line one, one spot to line two, one spot to line three, another to line four, and a tiny, tiny dot to line five. I now take some phthalo blue and put a spot on all lines except number six. I'm adding blue because blue is a cool colour and is always visible in shadow. I can blend all of my mixes now and I'm using a palette knife for this as I can move the paint around easily with this little guy. Now that my colours are mixed, we can apply them to the canvas. And refer to the PDF for some guidance there. And it's a bit of a paint by numbers kind of deal. To apply my paint, I'm using the number 12 angle brush. There's no particular method to this, but I like to work on petal by petal. And I like to start with my darks. So let's get this paint on. Here goes. I paint up to the line here, and I suppose it's a little bit like a watercolour in the way that you draw on your shadows. On goes my number one, or my darkest tone. 
This is the deepest area of shadow. Into the number one mixture, I add the number two mixture and blend it into the number one. Keep the paint wet by applying it thickly and work quite quickly. Now I add some number six, pure white, because this part of the petal is in highlight. I then move to the number two and then to the number three, blending all the while. In the area in the corner here, it is in total shadow. So I lay in the number six. And that's it in a nutshell, really. To aid in blending, you just give it a bit of a spritz with some water sprayer. And you can see how that blends a little bit nicer. Regarding what colour goes where, just keep referring to your reference material and you can't go wrong. And remember too, try to follow the contours of the petals with your brush strokes. And just build petal by petal. It comes together quite quickly. Well, that rose is looking great. And while that's drying, let's paint in our stem. So for that, I'm just using a little bit of mid green in the silver series. And let's lay that on. Cover these sepals and the stem in this green and then create a darker green by adding phthalo blue and lay this into the area that will be in shadow. Well, my rose is fairly finished, but now in its fabulous glory, it's making the background look a little bit flat. So I'm going to create a little bit of a glaze and that'll really make it resonate. So I squeeze out some lemon yellow and a touch of permanent red. Into these colours I squeeze out some acrylic gloss medium and I paint this mixture onto the background. That background looks worthy now. The last step is to embellish our rose with water droplets, and this is really easy. I'll be using a Montmartre Taclon liner for this, some black paint, and a spot of white. To create this illusion, draw a neat grey circle, and shade the top and bottom in grey. Paint in a little shadow, and a white highlight, and there you go. Now, when you look at it closely, it just looks a little meh. But when you move back, it looks like a convincing little water droplet. Now add another, and some more, and some more. Ah, beautiful. Well, there it is, a lovely big white rose in acrylics. Until next time, keep on painting.